Welcome. This is the first of several mini professional experience sessions, or as we like to call them, mini PEs, brought to you by the STEM Equity Initiative. The goal here is to listen, learn, and experience the content provided, reflect on it, and discuss it with your colleagues. We hope that these mini PEs will not only start some new thinking, but also create new awareness, deepen your understanding, and even lead to some positive behavior changes related to creating equitable learning environments for all students. The content of this video is based on award-winning, peer-reviewed research and tested in classrooms by educational experts like you. To get the most from each video, you may want to keep a pen and paper or a device nearby to record new information or make a note of items you want to revisit for further reflection. At the end of the video, a link to a reference page will be provided to support your understanding, discussions, and learn more. As an educator, in addition to the content you teach, you also play a key role in helping each child or adult develop their gifts and talents and build the resilience needed to weather whatever challenges life may throw at them. What is an equitable learning environment? For the STEM Equity Initiative, we begin by defining the term equity as an experience of fairness that builds a sense of trust, safety, and empathy among the students and between the students and their teacher. Most educators agree that achieving equity is a good goal, but how is it achieved, or even defined, is not well understood. This image represents a traditional idea of equity in the classroom. The fence represents students' prior academic preparation, their current academic ability or disability, and their cultural, economic, and environmental experiences. The ground is higher or lower for students based on their level of educational preparedness. The metaphorical boxes represent the academic and social supports needed to overcome student barriers to learning. In the current educational system, this image makes sense. Educators are expected to do all that they can for students to address their deficits and overcome their barriers. The problem is that students are more than deficits. We are all more than our deficits. This historical image of equity suggests that a student's identity can best be understood by first understanding his, her, or their situational, financial, social, cultural, or personal challenges, barriers, or deficits. These deficits are often only misunderstood differences. Nevertheless, educators are expected to address these perceived deficits and demonstrate improvement in overcoming them. This is what we call the deficit model of education. The STEM Equity Initiative believes that equity can better be represented by this image. We know that all students enter the classroom with both assets and deficits. And we appreciate what can be gained by the consideration of students' gifts and talents, as well as the challenges. The inclusion of both is what we refer to as the asset model of education. The asset model balances our students' developing gifts and talents with their vulnerabilities and challenges to represent them as a whole child. The whole child includes all that he, she, or they are. Consider everything that makes us who we are socially, emotionally, physically, spiritually, intellectually, academically, financially, ethnically, linguistically, and more. While these characteristics are part of who they are, they are not all of who they are. These characteristics are also part of who we are, but not all of who we are. In an equitable learning environment, all students are first recognized as valuable assets in the education process, and secondly recognized for their learning and social development needs. In summary, high quality educators realize that education is about more than delivering content and pedagogy. Education requires an environment that recognizes, accepts, and cares for the unique qualities of the whole child. When this is experienced for each child, then learning can truly begin. Please pause to reflect or discuss with your colleagues the following statements or questions. Please define your identity in terms of your recognized gifts and talents, your challenges or perceived weaknesses, either in the past or now. Consider your students. 
Can you share a story of a student requiring an individualized learning plan, also known as ILP, who pleasantly surprised you in the classroom academically? How about a student whose social or emotional contributions improved the educational experience and learning outcomes for the other students? Reflect or discuss students' assets that may get overlooked in the formal ILP. Finally, how do we as educators best address the whole student in terms of recognizing their assets and potential weaknesses while focusing on delivering content using the best pedagogy? To answer that question, in 2013, I conducted an informal study of the effective practices of the top 100 STEM teachers in the nation. Each year, the National Science Foundation had asked every state to identify two of their best STEM teachers. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, or Mathematics. This included career and technical education instructors as well. Having gone through a rigorous selection process by each state, the teachers were brought to Washington, D.C. and were recognized by the President at the White House. I got to speak to the teachers to learn about their effective practices. I believed that if I could find their magic potion, the silver bullet, or the top 10 best practices, I could share them with the other educators and we would all know the secret sauce. Educators would all know the answer. Did I find the answer? Yes and no. I found that the 100 teachers representing 100 different schools had 100 unique strategies that worked for them to achieve their students' academic success in STEM. The award-winning teachers represented rural, urban and suburban schools, diverse or homogeneous student populations, and low, middle and high income communities. So what did they all have in common besides teaching STEM? The one thing they all had in common was their shared love for their students, and their students shared love for their teachers. The secret sauce was the teachers. In every case, the teachers provided safe, trust-filled, inclusive classrooms where students felt cared for, where they learned to care and help each other, where they felt challenged to achieve the highest academic levels and where they learn to appreciate their own gifts and talents for serving their community and the world. Please pause here to reflect on this point. It's not the practice, it's the person. So how do we replicate people? How do you show you care for your students? Do you feel they care about you? Why or why not? Do you believe your caring for your students is fully experienced by them? How does a teacher create a classroom environment where every student, including those traditionally underrepresented students, feels cared for, supported, heard, and trusted? How do we apply this to non-traditional programs in career and technical education, as well as traditional STEM instruction? Whether your classroom is face-to-face -face or virtual, traditional for the student by race or gender or non-traditional, being aware of the student's state of mind and being able to adapt accordingly is a major part of what shapes an equitable learning environment. Did students enter your school or classroom feeling hungry, fearful, or isolated? Were they excited to see you and their friends? Were they distracted or bored? Were they fighting with a technology, a tool, or another student? Being new to the program or subject matter, were they confused by what you said and fearful of asking questions that appear, quote, stupid, close quote, to their peers? Do students trust you to tell you their story? Are you open to listening? Creating an equitable learning environment requires a space that feels caring, safe, and accessible to each student. This is challenging enough face-to-face -face when we have student body language to read, along with verbal responses. I don't understand. And even peer input. Mr. Stanley, Jason is asleep. What the top 100 STEM teachers told me, and many other teachers, is that demonstrating your care for your students means being open to learning from your students, seeing their assets, helping them with their challenges, and believing in their ability to find what will work for them to serve the world. Teachers have also told me, and research supports it, that shared trust is essential to the student engagement in learning. I have found this true in my own practice. When students tell me their greatest fears and challenges, 
I make sure I thank them for trusting me because their trust and openness is a gift of understanding that will allow us to solve the challenge together. An equitable learning environment requires teachers and students experience, caring, and trust focused on the assets and challenges of the whole child. But there is more. Based on the review of decades of award-winning, peer-reviewed, multidisciplinary research and work with practitioners, the STEM Equity Initiative has recognized four overlapping characteristics or qualities of an equitable learning environment. The four overlapping indicators for an equitable learning environment, ELE, include normalizing, empowering, inclusive, and relevant. Normalizing, empowering, inclusive, and relevant together create the acronym NEIR or NEAR. Normalizing refers to educational instruction that connects to students' previous lived experiences and feels relatable and comfortable. Normalizing helps us to understand one important factor for student career selection in CTE programs, whether they have experience and have enjoyed that experience in their past. Is it normal to them? Normalizing can also be achieved for those students who are unfamiliar with a career path by connecting it to something that creates a sense of familiarity. For instance, female or male students who have worked in a kitchen with cooking tools before may be more comfortable and confident in a culinary arts program from day one in their classroom. Empowering students means building their confidence to take risks, think independently, help others and accept failure as a course correction, not a dead end. Students are responsible for and recognized for their own learning and the learning of others. Empowering students leads to increasing resilience and confidence in achieving student academic and personal goals, even as classes get more rigorous or they face being a student from an underrepresented population in a non-traditional program. Empowered students are more than just confident and self-efficacious. They also use their gifts and talents to serve and support others, which also builds empathy. Inclusive can best be defined as the student's experience of belonging. Most people can recall a school experience of feeling left out or rejected by other students. You may recall being bullied, made fun of, or teased. None of this is acceptable. An important part of the education equation is addressing the variable of character development. All educators must be role models to acknowledge our own biases and lack of diverse cultural knowledge. We must also both model and teach the value of caring for others and treating them well. Too often, the essential character qualities that students must develop as part of their education has been relegated to slogans on posters in hallways and classrooms. What has been lost in some academic settings is the time and focus needed by all to appreciate and value our multicultural country and build empathy to better serve the world. Being inclusive requires that educators are aware of and responsive to the ways that students are marginalized by our current education system and the impact of implicit bias of educators, student peers, or others. The truth is, we all have biases, for better or worse, which we will talk about in another mini-PE. But for now, just know that to be inclusive means that our classrooms and schools feel inviting, welcoming, safe, and loving for every student. Creating this space is the job of the teacher and the students. Relevant education means students experience relatedness with their teachers and the learning is relevant to their lives through direct connections to their family, community, and cultural experiences. In the last couple of decades, hands-on learning has become an important pedagogy for teaching learning through doing. Relevance, as defined here, includes problem-based learning, and adds the context of service learning and personal reflection, critical for character development. Click the link to watch the brief video of Christina Perez. Look for examples of normalizing, empowering, inclusive, and relevant, near. Christina Perez is based on a real student in a building trades program in a career and technology education school in Pennsylvania. 
She is non-traditional for her carpentry program, which means that she is a female in a program that has 25% or less women working in the carpentry workforce today. There are many reasons people believe that girls and women do not go into this career pathway. Christina tells us that there may be many reasons she did. Pause, reflect, and discuss the following questions. What early factors played a role in normalizing Christina's career choice? Who helped empower Christina to ask questions and overcome others' resistance to her career choice? How did Christina's teacher further strengthen her confidence, self-efficacy, and resilience for her career choice? Hint, remember the asset model? What experiences helped her to feel she would be included in her classroom and career choice? How did relevance in serving others play into her enrollment decision? How did Christina's experience with the issue of gender impact her pathway to a career in construction? Research and experience both inform us that change takes time, lots of it. So how do we make change to benefit our underrepresented students today? One step at a time. Below are some options from which you might choose. If you're not already doing one, try it this week. If you are, well done. Share with your colleagues. They all contribute to the environment and cost no money and little time. Stand by your door when your students enter the class and welcome each one by name, followed by a quick, simple question or positive statement. Visit the cafeteria over the week and chat with students. Visit different tables every day for a few minutes to learn more names and make sure they know yours. Set up a handshake day for your class or school to teach students about best interview practices. Shake hands, if allowable. Make eye contact, smile, and share a friendly, good to see you. Have the students do the same with their peers. Practice makes permanent. Come up with your own practice and try it out. Does it help normalize your future students to your course or career area? Make students all feel empowered to learn and included in the classroom experience. Think of new ways to make your hands-on projects connect to community service. Congratulations, you made it. Well done. In this first professional experience, you rode the wave and learned the basics about building or recognizing the elements of an equitable learning environment. The next videos will provide you with a much deeper dive on the four indicators but for now, sit back and reflect on how awesome you are as the teacher, the career builder, the caregiver, the friend, the mentor, and the CTE and STEM advocate. Every day, you are helping build a better world, one person at a time. We see you and we thank you. You rock.